Welcome back. We're in Nottingham with Antoinette. She's got 90 grand to spend and is looking for a three-bedroomed house. Yesterday, Antoinette saw a brightly decorated Victorian terrace. Wow. <laughs> but the kitchen was too small. A house she liked in Sherwood. Mmm, it's nice. But the kitchen's still too small. And a real renovating challenge. But one without the space she wants. For Antoinette, space takes priority over everything else, and we think we might find it in Basford Road. This large Victorian semi has three bedrooms and is on the market for just under £100,000. Many original features have been restored by the vendors. And finally, we hope we've got the large kitchen diner Antoinette's so keen on and a cellar for her woodwork. It's day two and Phil and I are looking at a house that we'd originally discounted because it was too expensive. At £99,950, it's £10,000 above Antoinette's top budget. Look what you get for £10,000. I know. <laughs> Downstairs, it's exactly what she wants. I know. It's those three reception rooms which she was so adamant about needing for the lodger. But is it a bit mean to show it to her? Well, this is what she wants. I think we have to show it to her and give her the choice. There she is. There she is. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Hi. We've got a bit of a thing to show you there. But we have finally found the three living rooms that uh, we think you're off. Yeah. Front one here. Very well proportioned. Fantastic. Yeah. Good ceiling height, beautiful mm. fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very nice. This is our second reception room. Beautiful original tile floor. I suspect this room would have been the kitchen. Mm, I love the tiles, I really do. In the corner there, there's a beautiful cupboard, which is one of the few original features. It's huge. That feeling of continuity is really, really nice. From an impressive front room to a great sized kitchen, although it does need a bit of work. Is this the long, thin kitchen that you were after? I guess if it were up to me, I might change the ordering of the kitchen a little bit. Um, I'm just noticing that there aren't units as such. It's got exposed brick mm. and it's a freestanding kitchen. Now, the estate agent's particulars don't include the kitchen appliances, mm -hmm. so you would have to spend money replacing them yeah. if you don't have them already. Uh -huh. Kirsty and I quite often like to include these kitchen appliances within the negotiations that we carry out. Uh -huh. Not too many reservations. Let's see how upstairs measures up. Master bedroom. Mm -hmm. Really big. Mm -hmm. I'm disappointed that there's no fireplace in here. It'd look really grand, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. If, if you look yeah. in the cupboards, hold on. I suspect that the cupboard goes further back. The de yeah, the depth oh, yes. of the cupboard, of depth, that's yeah. a sign that, that there was a fireplace there. Wasn't uh -huh. it? So if, if you've got a situation like that and you want to know whether there's a chimney piece, go to the cupboard on the side and, and measure it. Here we are at the top of the castle. And this is the room which I really think that you can utilise for the best financial advantage. Yeah, it's huge. We've talked about a lodger and I think you can make this into a self-contained studio flat. Mm -hmm. I reckon Antoinette's got all the space that she needs in this house. But as the cost of moving rises, more and more people are extending both up into the attic and down into the cellar, and they can make excellent rooms. But remember, work done down here can change the support structure of the house. So use a specialist firm. Don't mess about with this one. If Antoinette did decide to make this a self-contained flat, she must adhere to the fire and safety regulations, she must inform her mortgage company that she has a lodger, and she must check out the tax implications of that added income. So plenty of space, but is she willing to stretch her budget? Just across the road, there's another property that'll test how keen she is to roll up her sleeves and get out the sledgehammer. Beyond the walled garden, there's a surprise. Our final house is a detached, double-fronted family home with three generous bedrooms. It's on the market at £79,000. Antoinette's just been saying she thought this was two houses. In actual fact, it's one very big one. <laughs> wow. Now, this house is... Uh, I'm, I'm lost for words. Yeah. It's a sort of homage to the mid-60s. The riot. The ceilings have all been lowered. Oh. If you have a look... You see they come just to the top of the windows. Uh -huh. So I suspect underneath this there is cornicing and all the original features. Right. That probably goes up another two foot. If you take this wall out, yeah, yeah. step through here, yeah. 
There's your big kitchen. Oh, wow. It just goes on and on. Look, yeah. all the way into there. So you'd have a laundry room in there. You could also have a downstairs bathroom, because there's only one bathroom upstairs. Yeah. Then you would have a sitting room next door and a little study in what's now the pantry, because it's quite a big room. Mm -hmm. What's going through your mind? I was just thinking, um, you could move a family of three <laughs> just to this bottom yeah, bit no. and still and not notice them. No. It's massive, it's massive. Well, come to the rest of it, see if you think it's incredible when you've seen all that. Back passage here, pantry. She seems to have taken that very well. I didn't think that she would. But this is serious work here. She's got new heating, wiring, plumbing, roofing, the whole shebang. I'd be very pleased if she did it, but I don't reckon she will. You have not seen anything until you get up here. <laughs> OK. If you just stand here in the lobby, you can count one, two, three, four, five different carpets. <laughs> so mm. it's, it's a feast for the senses. Yes, indeed. Taking on a project like this is a big commitment. And I'm not sure I've met anyone who's brought one in both on time and in budget. So before you take the plunge, ask yourself three serious questions. Can you live in it whilst the works are going on? Because if you can't, you're going to have to rent somewhere. Do you have a financial cushion? Because believe me, things will go wrong. And thirdly, do you have the time and emotional energy that it's going to take to manage the project? I'm not sure about this house. I'm not sure about it. Um, Space-wise, obviously, there's a lot of space, but the arrangement isn't quite as as good as I think the previous house. So, as day two comes to an end, it's time to find out if any of our houses have made an impression. We've shown you five things that are on the market at the moment, mm -hmm. the ones that match your requirements as close as we can. Mm -hmm. Are any of those totally right for you? Yes, I would say so. Um, I'm interested in two, two properties, uh, but one in particular. I'd really like to see it again. It's the largest of the houses that we've seen. Uh, it's the one with the amazing room at the top. Um, I really like that house. I don't think I could ask for anything better than that, really. Yeah. Now, that is nearly £10,000 above your top yeah. budget. For me, I don't want to move again. You know, if I get this house, that will be it for me. It's such a huge house. I think there's so much potential and flexibility in there. I think it will meet all my needs, so I'm prepared to stretch. The other house you want to go and see, which one is that? That will be house number two. I want to see that, really almost by way of comparison, you know, that in a way would help me to be absolutely sure about what I'm going to be doing. Bright and early the following morning, it's time to revisit the two final contenders. Morning. First, it's Sherwood, where the deal breaker is the small kitchen. Can it be extended into the garden? And at what price? Chris, a local surveyor, may hold the answer. Chris, this is the area that Antoinette would really like to extend into. We've noticed that next door has already done it, so we're hoping that, that creates a planning precedent, but very interested in your comments and advice on what she needs to be thinking about. In terms of actually taking the wall out, the wall which is up on the first floor would need to be supported. They would have to put in a steel beam or a concrete beam and then pin it, pin it up, hold it in place before the rest of the wall comes out. So, Antoinette could get her bigger kitchen, but what will it cost? I think you could be spending anywhere between, um, say, five to seven thousand pounds. Does Antoinette like the rest of the house enough to justify the expense? Chris thought that it would take about a month's work and cost in the region of five to seven thousand yeah. pounds. How does that make you feel? Um, I guess it's quite reassuring on the cost. I mean, it's not going to cost a vast amount of money, but. You know, it's a lot. It is a quite a fair amount of, of hassle sure. and uh, to go to, um, and I just think that perhaps it's better to spend that money on a house that's already, you know, the size and has got the dimensions that I need. Mm -hmm. Back to the Victorian semi in Old Basford. The house is nearly ten thousand pounds over budget. It impressed Antoinette the first time, but will she like it enough to really make the stretch? Good feeling. Bad feeling. Absolutely great feeling. Um, I just got a really good feeling immediately as I was walking up the path. And this room it actually seems bigger to me than, than I remember it. That's you know, great. And, and since I want space, that's yeah. a good thing, yeah. But his second viewing's more about head than heart, and Phil spotted a potential problem. The brickwork at the back of the house and at the side of the house is dated, it's tired. Quite a lot of the bricks 
Around the back here, you can see a blown. The moisture and the frost has got behind it's pushing the front of the bricks off. Right. In three or five years' time, this back and side of the house is going to need repointing. And how much would that cost? Is that quite a lot of money? It can be done for about £20 a square metre. On a house of this size, you've got an additional cost of scaffolding. Right. Uh -huh. uh, give you a rough idea, I'd say about £2,500. £2,500, that's quite a lot of money. It is a lot of yeah, money, but... but it's quite a lot of house. Yeah. And buying a house, particularly as big as this and as old as this, mm -hmm. brings with it a maintenance issue. Yeah. Since the house is already above budget, Antoinette doesn't want to spend lots more on renovation. As with any house of this age, she'll need a thorough professional survey to check for other potential expenses. Plenty to think about. The house has space and character. But is it the right house for Antoinette? So you change your mind, you don't want the house. Nope, it's still good. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's her favourite, but does she like it enough to make an offer? I am absolutely crystal clear that the over-budget house is the house for me. Um, <laughs> don't we all funny, think that? that? <laughs> you know, strange as it may seem, um, if I make that huge step to come back home, then I need to do myself proud, and that means getting the house that I can live in for a very long time. And that's the Victorian Semi in Basford Road. So, over to Phil to do the deal. Let me be very straight with you. She is prepared to pay £96,000 for the house. She is prepared to pay a further £2,000 for all the kitchen white goods and for an exclusive period of three weeks. And I mean by that that all marketing of the property is to cease, nobody else is to see that house. She would want to do the deal quickly. Fine. And after a period of protracted negotiation... We have done a deal. Oh! You have done 98, a deal. £98,250 buys you the lot. Everything. All, everything, white goods, the lot. Exclusive and all the white goods. No one's going to see it this weekend. No one's going to see it this weekend. Oh. So, <laughs> which is... That, is? that is a real cause for celebration. Yeah. But Antoinette's now had the property surveyed and it needs more work than her finances will allow. Unfortunately, the survey revealed a whole host of problems I was just completely unprepared for and frankly, it just doesn't make economic sense for me to proceed with the purchase. It will make a fantastic house for somebody else, somebody who's got a lot of money and a lot of time, but unfortunately not for me.